Hello, 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 everybody. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So today, this one is especially for the grade tens. We're doing geography, and we are going to be doing synoptic weather maps. But like in those synoptic weather maps, there's going to be other elements of climatology. So yes. <laughs> I really hope um, you've got your notes out, you've got everything. So yeah, let's get started. So the first question we're going to be doing is from an example paper. So yeah, this is the synoptic weather map that we're going to be doing. So the first question says, indicate whether pressure systems A and C are high or low pressure systems respectively. Okay, A. A, A would definitely be a low pressure system. The reason for that is because it is a um, mid latitude cyclone, and a mid latitude cyclone is a low pressure system. And then C, can't seem to see C, so I do not know which C they are talking about. So we'll skip that question. And then 1.3.2 says, describe the cloud cover at B. All right, so we're gonna do this. Okay, You firstly, when they ask those questions, you need to know that there's like five things that you need to describe. The first one is the air temperature, which is this on top, and that's 24 degrees. And then the second thing is the dew point temperature, which is this at the bottom, that is 21 degrees. And then the cloud cover. Oh, the question just said describe the cloud cover. Okay, but we just, yeah, let's just do everything. Okay, the cloud cover is overcast because it's fall. So yeah, cloud cover is overcast. And then the wind direction. What I usually do to make this easier for myself, I draw this. An imaginary axis basically so that I know where's where north south east and west okay so that's that okay it is not no it's not southwest but it's more on the west side so it would definitely be west southwest so yeah that's what I do for the wind direction that's how I get it. And then the wind speed, they didn't ask it, but it's 10 knots. How you see that is this li these little things. Yeah, so if there were two of them, it would be 20 knots. So, yeah. Okay, the next question says, give two points of evidence from the weather station at B that indicates that the possibility of rain is high. Well, how you know that the possibility of rain is high is firstly, the cloud color is overcast. And that means there's a lot of clouds in the sky. So there's barely any sun visible. And you know that in most cases when it's cloudy, it's often going to rain. Not always, but yeah. And then the second reason is that if you look at the air temperature and the dew point temperature, the, the numbers are close to each other. So that means that there's a lot of humidity and obviously it's going to rain soon. Well, yeah, the possibility of rain is high. And then the next question says, what are the lines of equal pressure on the synoptic weather chart called? They are called isobars. Isobars are lines of equal, <laughs> equal pressure, yeah. That's what an isobar is. Okay, so this question asks, will temperature likely be higher in area A or area B in this figure? Okay, my answer is area A. And the reason for that is that area A is at the equator. And the equator receives the sun directly. Like, yeah, so it receives direct sunlight because... The sun's rays strike there directly, like throughout the year. And another reason for that would be that um, solar energy travels here through a smaller volume compared to at B, where there's a larger um, volume of atmosphere. 
so that's why the temperature would be higher at a than at b yeah and well b doesn't really get <laughs> as much sunlight and the rays don't strike directly so those are the reasons this question asks why is it that durban is hotter than port Norlith, even though both of them are situated on the same line of latitude and that reason would be they even like gave you a clue on this diagram okay so firstly on the east coast which is where durban is the warm mozambican current flows there so the warm mozambican um beacon current has warm air and then that warm water is going to heat up the air that is found in durban and basically every other part of the east coast whereas at port Norlith, it's on the west coast and on the west coast the cold benguela current flows there so the waters the cold waters from the benguela current are going to cool the air in port Norlith and basically every other place on the west coast well yeah as you know there's like four factors that control the climate it's latitude it's altitude it's distance from the ocean and all all those other things so in this case it would be the fact that yeah port Norlith occurs on the west side just for more information Okay, so this diagram, well, this figure shows a cloud. So now the question says, identify the cloud type. This one is a cloud that you must never ever forget up until you're in matric. Because it's one of those clouds that they like asking about because you see them almost every time. Okay, now I'm giving you a clue. You see them almost every every time when there's gonna be like thunderstorms or something like that so therefore this cloud is a cumulonimbus cloud i think it has the longest name yeah cumulonimbus cloud and then characteristics of this cloud is that it is large and it is like really tall so like form some it forms sort of like a tower so we can say that it's a large, tall, towering cloud. And another thing that is important is that it is anvil shaped. Like the shape is very specific to a cumulonimbus cloud. You get other clouds like cirrus clouds, which are thin and wispy. So it's very important to like when you study your clouds, you also know the characteristics of them. And another important one is that... When you see heavy rain, when you see hail, like on a figure, that is a characteristic of a cumulonimbus cloud. So yeah, you could you could say that it produces heavy rain or hail, but I wouldn't really, I wouldn't advise you to write that. Rather, write the characteristics that actually describe the cloud itself. So yeah, that is it. <laughs> Not quite. Oh yeah. You just you also need to know the formation so you need to know the name of the cloud you need to know the characteristics of the cloud and how the cloud forms so how this cloud forms is that there's going to be like strong convection currents so there's usually like the wind is usually strong and all that stuff and the humidity as well like you must notice that before it rains like before there's thunderstorms it gets really humid like it gets super super hot so there should be like a high moisture content and then there should be well large scale condensation so those are like briefly how the cloud forms okay yeah so that's it for today thank you so much for watching i really hope it helped out i hope you understand more now and i mean if you do have any questions drop on those comments and if you enjoyed it please like please subscribe and tell everyone you know just let them know so that they can also get help and they can pass you know and not even just pause, but do great. So yeah, thank you so much, guys. See you next time.